Hello, this is Corey from SaaS Pegasus, and we are back with another episode of Building a SaaS Application with Django and Pegasus. So as a quick reminder, we're building an application to translate other apps from one language into multiple languages using AI. So far, we've set up our application and our data models. We have written a little importer to get our translation files into those data models, and we have a script that can generate translations using AI. If you want a recap of any of that, you can look at the last couple episodes in the series. So today, I want to finally start building a UI for this thing. Let's dive in. OK, so here is the very detailed outline of what I want to accomplish today. I want to create a UI for our translation engine. And these are the rough steps I'm going to try and follow today to do it. I learned how to add chapters to a YouTube video. So I will add chapters to this video. So feel free to skip around if you're interested in some of this stuff and not interested in other stuff. There should be links in the description and little chapters on YouTube. So first, I want to revisit the data models. And I'll talk a little bit about why I want to do that. And we're going to make a UI. This is kind of my very loose idea of the steps for doing a UI. We're going to create a project, upload our translation file, generate the translations, maybe provide a way to view and edit those translations, and then download the results. And then we win. So if you watch the last screencast, we already have a script that does 90% of this. And now we want to make that script into something that anybody who touches our app can use. All right, let's get into it starting with data models. All right, so why are we updating our data models? The main thing I want to support is multiple files. So if you see in this Django project here, there's like a Django file and then there's a Django JS file. These have our Python and Django translations in one and then our JavaScript translations in another. And in order for this app to be useful, it needs to be able to generate both of these files. So what I want to do just to add a little model sitting underneath our project, which will have a reference to these file names, essentially. Cool. So let's make those updates. So we're going to go into our models file. And so we have our projects and our languages, which is good. And we basically want to add a new model here that is like, I guess, translation file. And this is going to be a base team model because it's going to be associated with a team. And it's going to have a project, which will be a foreign key. On delete, we can cascade. And it's going to have a file name, which will be a care field, maybe, I don't know, 100 characters. And this might be all we need. So I'm imagining now my project will be like translate in this case of this application. My fi transition files will be django.po and django.js.po. The MO files get automatically generated from the PO files. And then these input texts are now associated with a file because there's going to be some stuff that's in the Django file and then there's going to be some other stuff that's in the JavaScript file. And so we want to add essentially a translation file foreign key here. Oops. Foreign key to the translation file. Okay, so far so good. The other thing I'm thinking about is this sort of primary language field that we put on the input text. And I think the primary language kind of belongs on the project and not on the translation file, because the project is going to control the sort of the main language, and they're going to have all the translations generated for one language, usually English. And then the input text objects don't really have a primary language, I don't think. I think they're kind of language agnostic. Not so sure about that, but I'm going to go for it. 
So I'm just going to move the primary language from the input text to the project. And then the other thing we noticed in the last screencast is that you don't actually need default texts. Like if you look at our English file, these are actually empty. Um, and so I think the default text is just the message ID. So I'm also going to remove default text from here. And these input texts will just represent our translation files and then these message IDs. And then we'll generate a set of translations for English for, uh, and for all the other languages that are configured in our project. Okay, so I'm happy with those changes. I want to see if our tests are going to pass with those changes. And well, actually, the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make new migrations for this. So let's do that. We're going to get an error because uh, list display admin. We have to update our admin first. Let's update our admin. So it's complaining about primary language here. Get rid of that. And let's see, should we add a uh, primary language to the project? Why not? Maybe here. And why don't we, while we're in here, add a new admin for the translation files. And what did we call that? File name project. Okay. Cool. Try that again. Okay. It is impossible to add a non nullable field translation file to your input text without specifying a default. Right. So this is Django essentially telling us that our migration is now going to create data that is invalid. And that's because we added a translation file here to input texts, but our input texts previously didn't have that. And it is not allowed to be null. So it's going to create a foreign key constraint when we try to do this in Django. So if this was already a production project and I already had data in the system, this would be somewhat complicated thing to fix. You would probably first create the constraints as null, then you'd write a, what's called the data migration to populate some empty translation files, and then you would write another data migration to set the translation files onto the input text, and then you would remove the null constraints. And that sounds like a lot of work. And thankfully, we're in the beginning stages of the project where we don't really care about our existing data. We don't care about migrations or anything like that. And so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to X out of here. And then I'm just going to delete everything in my database uh, for this app. So I can do migrate uh, translations. And then I think the special command zero will delete everything in your app. So all that hard work we did of generating all those translations is now gone. Our data is gone. Use that command carefully. But the nice thing that allows us to do is go into our migrations folder and we'll basically just delete this file. And now we can make migrations again. And we don't have to worry about those constraints because we're starting with clean slates. So that's a trick that I use a lot in the early stages of projects. You know, when I'm messing around with the data models a lot, just kind of wipe the app, start over. And the nice thing about using the migrate zero command is that it will still preserve like our user accounts and stuff. So we're not going to have to start from complete scratch. We will just, we just wiped everything in this translations app. Cool. So an unfortunate consequence of, of having wiped this thing is since we were storing our languages in the database, we've now lost all of our languages, which is a bit of a bummer. And since I'm probably going to be doing this a lot, I'm thinking maybe it would be nice to have a little script that just generates some languages in our database for us. So why don't we quickly create that script? And I'm going to do this as a management command, just like the previous one. 
So we'll call this sort of like bootstrap languages. And there are a bunch of ways to do this. Django has something called fixtures where you can create these via a like a JSON file or a CSV file or something like that. I usually use management commands because they are easier to work with and you can kind of more easily handle existing data. And uh, I think fixtures, you have to specify the IDs, which can be annoying if you're sort of like running these commands across different environments. So I'm just gonna do a really simple little for loop. We can kind of delete all these imports. And so this help text will be initializes languages in our database. Uh, it's not going to take any arguments. And then we're just going to say, so I mean, I think we'll just have sort of like, you know, languages equals simple like this, nice AI, okay, <laughs> we'll just do the AI, <laughs> we'll just, no, oh, come on AI, All right. well, I was thinking it'd be fun to just do the AI, the languages that the AI picks, but I guess it's not going to cooperate that with that. Deutsch, is that, I guess is, that's German? I'm just going to leave these in English because I think we translate them sort of using the translation functionally, functionality. But here we're going to store the English names. Okay, now, yeah, for language in languages, and then we can do language.objects.get or create name. So I think we want code equals language zero and then defaults equals name language one. Yeah. Import that. Let's print out our work. Language model. Equal that. Let's see if this works. Bootstrap languages. Oh, I gotta run our server. Look at our admin. Oh, that was the wrong button. I feel like I don't want this to be in <laughs> Spanish anymore, but yeah, okay, we got German. Cool. So now if we wipe our database again, we can easily bootstrap these languages and we can do this on the production side as well, which is a uh, nice little bonus. So little detour there, but that's what we're gonna do. Okay, where were we? So we just changed our data models and back to our outline. That off. Okay, so now we're going to do an onboarding UI. I guess we'll just dive right into that. So let's see what happens now when we just kind of go to our homepage. So, as iniciado sesión. I got to change this thing back to English. <laughs> Can't deal with this. But it is still cool that that worked. Okay, so this is going to be our landing page. And so I'm not gonna try to get the UX perfect on this go around. Onboarding is a really important thing when you're building a SaaS application and it is worth spending a good amount of time sort of thinking about your onboarding and especially the things that people often don't think about like these empty state screens, you know, like the first thing that you see in your app is what 100% of your users are gonna see when they first sign up. And so it is really important to provide a useful, good experience for them right out of the gate. And oftentimes what app developers will do is just, they'll just say like add project or something, 
which honestly is probably what I'm going to do right now, but I would recommend not doing this. And in a future screencast, like I'll spend some time thinking offline about what the ideal onboarding flow is for this project. But for right now, I want to just sort of get the nuts and bolts of an MVP working. And so I'm going to do the not so user friendly version of just kind of like mostly just having like a big add a project button or, or something along those lines. Okay, so let's get into it. The very first thing we want to do, so we already added a dummy view here for our homepage. And this homepage is going to be where our users are going to land. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this uh, require a login and a team. So login and team required. So login and team required is a decorator that ships with Pegasus that makes sure the user is logged in and then also make sure that the user can access the team that they are trying to access, which is determined by this slash a slash Corey in the URL. So if I'm a member of the Corey team, I will be able to access the translation under there. If I'm not, then I will not be able to access it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to update my root URL conf to make all of our translation app URLs team specific. And so oops, this is not the right URL conf. Right, so in this URL conf, there's a bunch of URL patterns. And then up at the top, you'll see there's also some team URL patterns. The team URL patterns are the URLs that will end up falling after slash a slash team ID. And so what I want to do is I want to move the translations URLs from our main URLs, where they would just be slash translations. And then I'm going to stick them under our team like that. And I think that might work. Let's see. Now if I go to translations, I'm, I'm expecting an error because it's expect it's going to expect a team slug. Yeah, but it is working. And anytime you use the login and team required view and you put it in the team URLs, then you also need to add a team slug, which is a string representing the slug of the team, you don't actually have to use that team slug anywhere. It'll automatically be populated under request.team. So we can print like, well, we can say hello team.request.team.name, uh, something like that. And now, now it's getting the team out of the request.team, which is handled by a combination of the decorator and a middleware that runs in Pegasus. The next thing we want to do is we want to make this look reasonable. So we, instead of just returning a HTTP response, we probably want to return a, um, do we want to return a template response, I think? Template response. And I'll say, um, yeah, translations home. And that might just be all we need for now. So then we're going to create this file. Why isn't it prompting me to create this file? Oh, because it's confused. Create this file. No? It's like giving me, there we go. So reliance on my. IDE to do this stuff. So yeah, so that just created a translations folder in our templates directory and then a home file there. And we will extend the what app base. It's gonna I think maybe web app. Something like that. And then block app. Now we can basically do the same thing. We'll do it in Django template language. And let's see if it works. Yeah, all right. So when you use the app based template, you will essentially get this application navigation as well as this top navigation out of the box. And then the content goes in this little 
main panel. Okay, so now, now what do we want to do? And I think we kind of want, I think we kind of want to automatically direct to like an onboarding type of page. So rather than put a bunch of logic in our sort of like translations home view, which I think will eventually sort of be our main dashboard for managing all our translations and stuff. What I think we want to do is we want to check if they have any projects defined. And if they don't have any projects, then we sort of send them over to the onboarding page. So let's code that up. And so basically now we can say something like if quest.team project set dot exists, return that thing. Otherwise, return a redirect, HTTP response redirect to, and we're going to reverse a URL that we haven't defined yet, translations onboarding. Let's import that. Now, in our translations URLs, we can add a new path for this, which we'll call onboarding. And we'll redirect it to a non existent onboarding view. Translations onboarding. We'll create this view. This view also needs a team slug and a decorator. And now we can do something like this. And we will just copy our home template into here. We can say, you are onboarding. Reverse for onboarding not found. That's because we named it translations onboarding. I'm just going to change that to onboarding because it's kind of redundant with the prefix. Reverse for, nope, and we need to pass it the team slug. Okay, we are onboarding and you can see now like if I go to the translations homepage, it, it keeps redirecting me to this slash onboarding URL where we can put our onboarding logic. Okay, so let's build out a little UX for this. So in Pegasus, like when I'm building the apps, the first thing I'll just default to in terms of a UI is I'll stick this in a, what's called in Pegasus, an app card. So we can make this an app card. And this will just kind of like put a little like white box around this essentially and some shadow and some spacing and stuff just make it look slightly nicer. And now we are not going to spend too much time on copy and stuff. I think this will mostly be a demonstration of the backend stuff and whatnot. So the first thing we probably want to do is we want to create a project. We can use Django forms for this as a starting point. So let's try and do that. So I'm going to create a forms.py file here. And then we're going to create a sure. <laughs> and then class project form. So models form for our project model. Nice AI. And let's see, do we need to do like how this works exactly with the fields? Equals um, name, languages. Sure. Let's see how this goes. And then we can uh, eventually we might have to refactor this code a little bit because if we don't have if we have a project already then our onboarding might want to take them directly to like step two or something like that but for now we will just make a form pass the form project 
platform maybe. And then let's see if we can just like render form fields. Let me need a submit button. Maybe uh, no, PG button primary. I did submit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> submit query. How do you put the text on a submit button? Um, the value? And you know, since we're building an entire application about translations, we might as well use them. So like, we're gonna translate this text. So that is how you mark something for translation in Django. And then this, if I run uh, make messages again, this will create a create project entry in all of our translation files. And then if I put some Spanish in there and ran a couple other things, then it would get translated into other languages. So that's that's a process that might be worth showing at some point, just since we're building an entire app around this concept. Um, and then you could also do like, yeah, so you can also do like block translate, something like this. It might complain about It might complain about request.team name. Let's see if it does. Yeah. So then you have to do something like uh, with request.team.name as team. Is that something like that? Okay. Let's. Uh, <laughs> Let's not reveal how little I know about block translations right now. And we will come back to that some other time. Okay, so we have this sort of not very good looking form, but that's okay for now. And we're gonna create a project. We'll call this project translates. Um, we'll translate it into everything, I guess, why not? And then, and when I click create project, this is not going to do anything. Um, first thing we want to do is make it a post. It will post to, should it post to onboarding? I guess so. It's tempting to use HTMX for this. Should we try to use HTMX for this? Maybe we'll get it working first and then we'll try to use HTMX after the fact. Brush up on my HTMX a little bit first. So uh, let's see. So we want like if request dot method is post form is project form request dot post and if form is valid project is form dot save. I think we can commit it. Yes. Form is else goes out there. Something like that. Oops. Created project. And so once we are done creating our project, then we want to go to upload file page, I guess. So let's see how that works. Upload file. And we'll upload the file in the context of the team, I'm just wondering if we also want a project ID in the URL, but I think, I think I'm not gonna worry about a project ID in the URL. We can add a project selector if they have more than one project, but probably most people will only have one project, so it's kind of extra craft. And then we'll, oops, this is the wrong file. Where did our URLs go? Path, upload, use, File. It's 
It's a bit repetitive, but maybe it's useful seeing how all this plumbing fits together. I don't know. Make sure that has a team. And then we'll just do like, same thing we're doing here, upload file. And we will go back here, copy some of this. I'll upload. Okay. How do we do? Let's see. This is ugly. Eh, let's just fix the spacing on that button at least. Uh, where was that? Input. Let's give it like a MT2. A little bit better. MT4. I think I use MT2 in most places, but MT4 seems to have a little bit more breathing room. Okay, create forbidden CSRF token. Try that again. Null value in primary language ID. Okay, right. True story. Primary language. Oh. Okay. Again. Probably like in the future, we may not want to expose this stuff. Oh, come on, team. All right, fair. So how do we add the team? Uh, let's see, so we could either add it here. I don't want to do it like this. Definitely don't want to show them the team. Yay, now we go to file upload. And hopefully, if we go to the admin now, we should be able to see that we did not create a project because we forgot to call the save function. Last time, let's see, come on. There we go. Translates. Languages. Did it not set the languages? It seemed like it set the languages. And what happens if I select like three of these and then do save and continue editing? Looks like they're selected. Uh, why didn't that work? Because it's a many to many field. So, um, do we do like project.languages.save? Something like that. Try deleting this. One more time. Okay, let's not select French. So, many related manager does not have attribute safe. So embarrassing. How do I save a many to many on Django? So chatty. Save M to M. There we go. Take away German. Uh, hey, okay, there we go. And this duplicate one got created. Get rid of that. Okay, project has been created. 
All right, so we can go back to our little checklist here, and we have created a project. Time to upload a file. So for file upload, it's going to be pretty similar to what we just did. And again, I'm hoping that we'll be able to improve on this UX. For now, I'm just going to do like a full page Django reload thing a thing uh, for everything that we do. But once we get this working, we can maybe splash in some HTMX, some other goodies, get the UI a little smoother. For now, we are going to add a file upload form. This is not going to be a model form, it's just going to be a regular plain old Django form. And we want to say like translation file forms dot file fields. And let's see, I was just looking at the, the Django docs for this, but, and then, yeah, I mean, I think we'll just pull the name from the uh, <clears throat> from the file itself. Actually, do we want this to be a model field? Because we do have this translation file model, but I think we're not going to actually save the raw file. We're just going to kind of save the project in the file name. So, yeah. So let's just um, we'll just make this a file upload form, and then. Give ourselves a little more space here. So, I mean, we can kind of just. I'm not going to do the exact same thing here, but so this is going to actually be a, what, a file upload form. This form is valid. Do stuff. Redirect somewhere. Otherwise, let's create an empty one, and we will pass it to our templates. Upload form template. I guess we wanted kind of the same structure. So where did we put that? Uh, upload file. Again, we're not we're not worrying too much about the UX right now. String object has no. That's because this is a upload form. Yeah, so that is very <laughs> ugly. We overshot our form. Let's stick that back in the app card. I don't know why the, yeah, okay. Okay, well, let's just see where it works. So where was that file? Personal translates. It's locale. Okay. Upload. This field is required. What field is required? Not sure why that's happening. Oh, it's because I'm not passing request.files in. Try that again. Are you kidding me? Why isn't this working? Let's see what's going on here.
So let's see what's going on here. Request.post, request.files, request.files. So it ended up in a, let's see, ended up in a post instead of in a files. Is that, let's see, okay, maybe there's like a mime type thing. ChatGPT. Ink type. Gotta be the ink type. Obviously. Silly me, not specifying an ink type. Let's see. Hmm. I think that worked. Yeah. Yeah, I think that worked. So, and I think unless people are uploading gigantic files, I think that probably we can just create all these models in directly in the web view. We don't have to worry about doing like something asynchronous or stuff. So what do we want to do here? We want to, um, we want to do something that we did in the test. So let's look at our tests. No, wait, we didn't. Oh yeah, we, we did parse something. Um, it wasn't a test, it was a management command. Yeah, so read PO file. We basically want read PO file, sync messages to database. Let's start with that. Uh, read PO file expects a file name, but we have an in memory file. So, can we string or relative path? Full or relative path? Hmm. Try GPT! <laughs> Name of this library we're using. Hmm. Well, I guess it might work. We have an in memory uploaded file object according to our logs here. I guess let's just pass it in and see if it works. So we want to do um, like form dot clean data. Don't actually know how to work with file forms in Django. I guess you just reference it from request.files. Which I guess makes sense. Form is just kind of doing validation for us. That's what we called it. Yeah. There we go. So we're gonna get those messages out and then we're gonna sync them to the database from our request.team. And then well, let's just like, okay, let's be optimistic and redirect to the next stage, which will be translate messages. Hmm, 
print those out, just see how it's working. And then we need to translate messages view. Translates, translate messages. I'm not sure if this guy wants a, uh, wants a file or not. Probably eventually he does want a file. A lot of repetitive scaffolding in this one. Picked it a string or bytes like object got in memory uploaded file. Let's see if ChatGPT knows how to deal with this. Okay. Well, we can try this. Geo file like. What a strange name ChatGPT has. Hmm. Ah, oh, you're sending me down a bad path, ChatGPT. My guess is maybe we, we need to just create a temporary file on the file system for this. It's going to apologize. Yeah, I knew it. Oh boy, <laughs> I'm definitely not doing that. Can you write code to... Much simpler. So we get the path there, and then we pass the path there. And then we kind of want to like delete it. We could maybe rely on the operating system to delete it, but we might want to delete that later. Let's see if that works. Boo. Right. Object must be stir, not bytes. Uh, WB? I guess maybe we needed the encode? I hate string encodings, man. 
he wanted us to do a decode. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. It is working and it is failing because we didn't update any of our code to make this work. So let's take another detour and do that now. So let's see. We want to do. Yeah. Yeah. So this is failing. I'm actually. I'm gonna. I'm gonna remove the keep DB once because we want to destroy our test database since we were mocking with migrations and stuff. Okay, so that'll fail. Now we'll do it with keep db. And this should now give us the failures that we need to fix in our functions. Input text got Unexpected keyword arguments test translation file generation. Okay. okay, so those are gone. We also need to let's see, create a project. Probably need to create a file. I don't know about that. And what do we want? File name. And then these input texts now also need translation files. And teams, message IDs, we got rid of the default text. Okay, that's a little bit better. Primary language violates none. No. Okay, so primary language equals self dot English. Probably need to add some languages, why not? Okay, that's working. I suspect our import code still isn't working though, because we didn't write tests for our import code, did we? So we did some useful work, but we didn't actually do the work that we needed to do. Just thinking if we wanna write a test for our input file. I think we do, I think we're gonna want one be a little bit more of a mission, but that's okay. Not so bad, I don't think. So let's make a new test here. Test, uh, what, translation file reading? Something like that. Test case, class. So yeah, so now like this is kind of an annoying part where like this is something that PyTest is quite good at where you can create fixtures and then you can use these different data fixtures in your different tests. And like like basically like what I wanna do is I wanna I wanna reuse all of this stuff 
in a few different tests. And unfortunately, there's like, you can do it in Django tests, but it's a little clunky. But we'll, we'll just do it in Django tests just to kind of demonstrate how this works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create a sort of like a test base type of file. And then we'll call it like translation base test. And then we'll put the, and maybe like we want, I think we maybe just want like all of that there. So this base test will just like kind of set up our team and our language and all this other stuff. I did that. Imports, imports, imports. And then our other tests will set it, inherit it. And then call like the super function. Let's see. Okay, that worked. And now we can use the same setup logic in our new test. Maybe we can get away with uh, not adding a new setup function. So def test translation file upload. And so now we're gonna want kind of like a uh, a little data directory. Um, so I often end up, if I have tests that are working with the file system, I'll often end up with like a test data directory where we stick some test files that we want to work with. Where did that go? And we can paste this test translations in here. Look at this test translations. So yeah, okay. This had some stuff in it. So we want to get that file name, translation file name is, and it's like, like os.path.join. And then there's like, like self.file or something like that. Is there like a file? Uh, how do we do this? I know it's, not very hard. How does it work in settings? Path underscore underscore file dot resolve. Sure. Maybe the more modern way of doing it. And then I think you can kind of just like add to it. Let's see how base dir is used. OS.path.join. Okay. So we resolve that, and then we add. So that's probably probably want the parent, I guess. Parents resolve dot parents, and then we join it with data test translations. Let's see if we did that right. That's a good place to stop. We're going to run different tests now. Uh, huh, why wasn't it running that test? Oh, let's try again. Four tests, there we go. And it printed, that seems like the right file name, I think. I hope, that's pretty good. And back to the management command where we were calling the function that we want to call, which is, let's see, so read PO file. I, I'm noticing that we keep calling these two, we keep calling these two functions together, this read PO file and the 
sync messages to database file. So like my guess is that we probably want to combine them into like their own helper function. Let's print these for now, but we should add some assertions. Okay. Well, this is the failure that we got way back when we were editing the UI. So now we have a failing test case and we can go fix it. But first, let's just do the assertions. So yeah, we want, let's see, how many translations did we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm actually not sure if it'll translate that first metadata thingy. We'll find out. But before we get into that, let's see, where are we? Sync messages to database is where the problem is. Problem is here with the primary language. So this sync messages to database function now also needs none of those things, but it does need a translation file. So team, and we could almost get rid of the team because the translation file will have a team. So maybe we just give it a translation file. And team is translation file that team. Translation file is translation file. Language we don't even need anymore. Ditch that. And let's see. Now we need to pass this, not the team, but the translation file. Which my ID is not smart enough to know about, but think left up file. How do we do? Five is not equal to six. That implies to me like the metadata thing did not get translated by the library, which makes sense. We can no longer print our input messages. Let's fix that. Tests are catching all kinds of bugs. Um, this get default text function is also no longer necessary, so I guess we could get rid of that and just use the string to find where that was used. Okay, and it looks like it did what we wanted, which is cool. We could add one little final check. Maybe we'll just like pull a random one of these things out and just like make sure it did what we wanted. So like, I don't know, human. Uh, let's see, input. Message equals input. Message dot function. Got. How are we going? Is that not the right title? Input text. Text. And what do we want? Translation file. self.file. I mean, actually, maybe, maybe, maybe what we should do is we should for input messaging, input messages, so that they all have the right team. 
sort that they all have the right file. And then maybe I'll just say uh, assert in. And we'll just make sure that there's one of them that has a message ID of AI. This is better somehow. And let's see, uh, what do we want? I am dot close. Uh, let's start with that. Don't know what I'm pressing to make my ID do that weird jump thing like that. Okay. I am dot message ID. Or I am in input messages. Really the problem is this variable should be named input texts and that would make things a lot cleaner. Let's refactor it. Okay. Good. Tests are passing. Back to the UI. Let's see if I just refresh this if it magically works. Team object has no attribute team. Why was the translation file a team? Because we didn't update our view code. Where do our views go? So this thing no longer wants a team. It wants a translation file. Right, so we have to create a translation file. So first we're going to do that. Translation file objects that create. And this will be what? Team is this team that we're working in. Projects. Quest of the team. Yeah, so this is kind of now where like you're wondering, or where I'm wondering, ah, should we have passed a project in the URL so that we're guaranteed to have one? I think maybe we'll just. Well, let's just like uh, uh, filter team is request team that first. We'll just kind of assume that there's one there for now. We'll we'll add some error handling and stuff later. Uh, translation file equals that. Now we pass the translation file there. Gonna work. Translate. Let's check the admin. So if that worked, then we should have a translation file which didn't get a proper file name to figure out why that's the case because we didn't set one. File name is and how do we okay, I'm stop running those tests? I'm wondering how we um, get the file name out of the request.files. Because I think we'll just use the default file name here. Let's maybe add the print translation file. <coughs> maybe let me just had a breakpoint here. Figure out how to get that file name out of there. And then transition file. Okay. Move that for a sec. Okay, this thing redirected us, so we're gonna have to there we go. So what translation file? Der translation. 
uh, has like a like a name. That'll work. Except I don't think file is the right thing. I think it's file name. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Duplicate key. Oh, okay. So our Import code is not edempotent. Is that possible? No, it's our constraint is wrong. I think we had a constraint here that the team should be unique to the message ID, but it's actually translation file. So you could have the same you could have the same input be a part of multiple files, and we want to support that case now. So that constraint is bogus, which means we're going to have to make migrations and then run migrations to get that constraint working again. There we go. And now we should have a second one. Uh, oh, yeah, we got a lot of them. Probably <laughs> we want another constraint that. You can't have more than one translation file with the same what project and file name. Yeah, I think that would be problematic if you had that. So now let's delete all these things. Make migrations and migrate again. And last time that worked. That's good. Did we get our input text out of here? Yes, we did. And now if I like try to do this again, crash. Yeah. Which we want and and we can handle that. We'll handle that probably somehow, I don't know, but I'm not too bothered about it yet. Okay, so let's see where we are. Upload a file, check. All right, it is almost lunchtime here. So I'm gonna get some food and take a little break. I will be back in a bit or instantly, as the case may be. So next up on our list is generating our translations. And before we get into that, I'm thinking it, it might make sense. So, so we had added this sort of like dashboard page. Um, oops, sorry. This like translations homepage, which we never really did anything with. And I'm thinking that after we have created a project, uploaded a file, I think that's probably good enough to send them back to like our translation dashboard. So maybe we can flesh out this translation dashboard a little bit, put some stuff here showing the user, the projects and translations that they've uploaded. Then we can add our translation layers on top of this. So I'm kind of thinking about what I want this dashboard to look like. And I think basically it's going to be like a list of projects. Inside the list of projects, you'll have like a list of translation files. And then probably you could dig into those files and see the individual translations inside there. And somewhere there's going to be like a generate translations for a particular language type of functionality. Let's, as we're doing, not worry too much about how it looks and just try to get the bones for all of that in place. And then uh, once we have a dashboard that sort of shows what we want, we can add our translator logic. So views, so yeah, so this is our home view. And if the project exists, we're going to essentially do all this other logic. I think I'll probably like 
flip this actually. Like if the project doesn't exist, then we'll do that. And that way we can just kind of code the rest of our dashboard views in here without having to worry about sort of it being overly indented. Yeah, so projects, I think we want projects. And we want team equals request.team. So first we'll kind of get our projects. Yeah. And in our home template, so the first thing we can do is we can stick this in an app card. And then we can do like, you know, um, I guess we'll have like a projects. I'm not gonna bother with the translation markup for everything in here. It's just, it's a bit onerous to, to add it all. Uh, in real time, and you can always go back and add it later. So, and then we can do like class equals title. I don't know, PG title actually. I think it's like the Pegasus. Yeah. So, projects, and then we can do for projects and projects. I think there's like a I feel like an else or an empty. Yeah. So in the empty thing, we could put like, you know, let me just put a link to um, what our onboarding URL, I guess, with the team.slug, create projects. So we don't have any projects, we want to show something like that. I'm just going to test that that works by I'm just passing in an empty list. Create a project. Okay. So far, so good. You can make that look like a link. There's like a uh, link. Tailwind doesn't style links by default. So, like, if you want something to look like a link, you kind of have to explicitly tell it, which can be nice. It can be kind of annoying sometimes, also. So now we'll pass in the real projects. And then I think probably like I'll, I'll call out to a, I'll include a sub template in here so that we can kind of isolate our project, project summary, if you will, to like a single type of template. So we'll do an include and then we'll do templates, sorry, uh, translations, components, project summary. I have kind of a convention of putting my partial templates in a components folder. And then, so now we can say like, I don't know. Oops. Project dot name. Select C. Yeah, OK. So far, so good. And so what do we want to show for a project? We want to show. Uh, let's see. So we want to show the files that it has. So like, like for translation file in project dot. And what is that going to be? It's going to be. So I think I will add a related name here. Yeah. Thank you, AI, because. Um, because we're probably going to be doing this operation of like referencing all the files on a project with some regularity. And now we can just do like, I don't know. Again, just kind of like getting some bones in place, making sure our plumbing is working. Let's see how that looks. We got a string method on that function, just so it, I mean, on that model, so that it looks more reasonable. Uh, let's see. Self dot file name. Maybe like, yeah, self dot project name. 
just have that project. Yeah, okay. I mean, <laughs> obviously we don't need this part for this particular UI, but we're gonna flesh this out a little bit more. And so what else do we wanna display about this thing? So we probably, I mean, let's just use a table, I suppose. Project summary. So, uh, yeah, okay. We'll stick the name here and then DA. Stick, let's stick a table in here. Like a PG table class. And let's see, so a head and what do we want to show here? We want to show file name and maybe like number of translations, uh, something like that. T body and okay, so yeah, so now we got another four in here. Four, what's uh, no, we don't have another four in here. This is going to be like, sorry, let's back out our for loop a bit. And then stick those like that. one row per translation file and we'll have like a, a TD already see I messed up up above fix that in a sec so I don't know uh, translation count something like that these should be THs TR outside of it. Translation count doesn't exist, but we could add it. And this is going to be self dot what messages and input texts. Maybe. This needs a related name. And if we want this to be a little bit faster, we can slap a cached property decorator on top of it. And this will this will basically just make sure that this doesn't hit the DB more than once per request, which can be nice. We didn't put the file name in properly. It's called file name. Yeah, okay. I'm kind of thinking about how we want this to look. So our translation file has our raw input messages. Then we also like are gonna have sort of like one row per language. So we could maybe like flesh that out a little bit. So this, this like, we're at, what we're actually looking at right now is not really the whole picture. We, we also want to bring in the translations that we're going to be able to see. And so probably we actually kind of want, like, our, we want our table to have one row per language in the project. And then we can kind of see the status of the translations that we've added. So... Yeah, so I think this this like outer loop of projects is kind of tripping me up and probably like the real unit that we want to be working with is files. And maybe since like, I don't know. Maybe since we're like, <laughs> I'm really just struggling with how 
nice to make this look versus like just making like just making something embarrassingly ugly to start. But let's let's just make something embarrassingly ugly to start. And so in addition to looping through all the projects, we're going to loop through all of the files. And we're going to do that not in a table, but we're going to do that in sort of like a file thing. And so I'm going to pop that for loop out. And here we'll just like, OK. So we have the project name there. Next, we're going to have Subtitle is we're going to have like the translation file name. This would be like the uh, title, subtitle, file name. And then for each file, and honestly, like I kind of, <laughs> kind of want this to be its own sub template too, so might as well just do that. Include. Translations, components, translation file summary, something like that. Move that in there. Move this table into here. Close that. Get rid of that. Uh, yep. So this template is now kind of useless, but we'll eventually add more stuff to the project probably. And now in this translation file summary, we can show our file name and then we'll have like, this is actually like language. And then inside the body, we will loop over the languages in project languages and this will be like language.name don't know exactly what goes in the other column yet let's just like see if that did what we wanted yeah okay not too bad not too bad the let's see so now number of translations is lying because what we really are showing there is like the number of input texts that we've defined. Translations are a different beast. And how are we going to show the translations here? Yeah, this is one of the things that's annoying with Django templates is like if you want to like Ideally, we could just sort of, if we were in Python code, you could just pass the language into the model as a function. You could just write like get, you know, translation count. But in a template, passing arguments is actually kind of not that easy, which is like kind of requires you to create a whole template tag in order to basically like add a number to a table, which is kind of unfortunate. There are a few different ways you can handle this. One is you can write a template tag. Another is you can sort of generate the data before you pass it to the template. So then like in the template, you've already kind of like created the data that you want and then you're just sort of displaying it on the front end. That's usually a pretty good approach. Uh, yeah. And we can also get really fancy and try to load it via JavaScript or Ajax or something like that. But let's see, let's see, let's see. I think for the purposes of this particular exercise, maybe we want to just have a function on the file that returns the data structure that we want. And then we'll just display it that way. And then we'll go from there. So like, I'm going to, let's see, does this want to be like a helper utility or a model method? Let's maybe start it as a model method and we could pull it out if we want. But so this is going to be like get uh, what translation summary. This is going to like return a summary of what we want. And for each row, I mean, should we? 
Should we define another like little data class type of thing? I'm just gonna stick the data class in here for now, just because I don't totally know where I want it. But um, it doesn't want to be here. <laughs> That's for sure. But yeah, okay. So we have a language. We have a what? I mean, is that? I, I guess implicitly we kind of have like a we have like a self like a, uh, a translation file. And then we could have a function that's like uh, get. Translation counts, Something like that. Or maybe, actually, since we're going to try to be efficient with our database calls, why don't we just do it like this? Translation counts, the number. Yeah, that feels simpler. And then, so we want to do, we want to do like an aggregate type of thing. Oh god, this is going to go poorly. So we want to do a let's see translation objects dot filter and the filter we want to say like what um, input text translation file self yeah. So we want to filter all the translations whose input text translation file is us. And then we want to do an aggregate. And yeah, I mean, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to old faithful chat GPT. How do I aggregate? Yeah, okay. Try that. So, let's see. Not aggregate, but annotates. Total is count of language. Five minus total, sure. And then I guess we need the values call as well. Um, do we need the values call? So why is this complaining? I think I must have messed up my parentheses somewhere. So it's total, there we go. Oh, there we go. So something like this maybe should work. Yeah, I'm not sure if we need that values or not. Let's just sort of print this, Let's see does um, and I guess like well let's just print it and see how it goes um, to print it we have to call it so we can call it in our views I suppose uh, and we'll call it in our template for Uh, 
position. All right. This is gonna break, but we're mostly interested in the printout, so that's okay. Let's see, did it print anything? Did not. Why didn't it print anything? Because we called project instead of file. Empty query set. Well, I suppose that's right. <laughs> it is an empty query set. So let's see. Let's add one translation. <laughs> translation team. It's a good thing we haven't added much stuff to this. The English translation of human is human. Now let's see what we got. Yeah. So translation object one. Why is there not a total? A filter annotate. I think probably we do need the values. Let's see how that does. Language code EN total one. Yeah, okay, that looks better. And so now we're basically going to, so we're gonna have that thing and we kinda of wanna make it a, we kinda of wanna make it a dict of like the language code to the total. So let's say, uh, counts is the default. Default dict, if you don't never use that before, is just a dictionary, but if you if the key doesn't exist, it will return a default value. So, and we're gonna do, let's see, we wanna make it sort of like a what? We want the values to be thing of language code, or the keys rather to be the thing of the language code, and then we want the values to be the total. Oops. So we're going to say like, uh, what? Oh my goodness. Yeah, language code. Row of language code. to row of total for a row in translations by language, something like that. And then, yeah, and then the key equals lambda row zero kind of always return zero. I don't know. I'm not sure if we did that right. Let's see. This is the unsexy part of coding. Did it print anything? First must, argument must be callable or none. I think I got my default dict. First. Does that work? Even worse. True. Oh, that looks good. 
the default dict with English and one. And now finally, we can, so for language in self.project.languages.all, we can yield a translation summary row with translation file equal to us, language equal to language, and translation count equal to counts language.code. I think we want to return a list. So why don't we just return a list? Okay. Now we've got these summary rows. So this will be like summary row dot language dot name. This will be session summary row dot translation count. Missing what? What are you talking about? Get missing. Maybe this is supposed to be. I think the AI confused me. I think this is just supposed to be lambda for a zero. Yeah, there we go. One English translation, zero Spanish translations, one French translations. And if we add another one, should we add another English or another? Let's add a Spanish one. Humano. I don't know if that's right. Yeah, okay. Well, that was a lot of work to put a number on a screen, but we got there. So now I'm thinking we want two more things here. We want a generate translations button and we want a download file button. Which one should we do first? I think the download file button will be easier. So let's let's start with that. So Download file button. Download. And then maybe like a, let's just make it a link for now. Calls. Hold your horses on that. Download translation file. Uh, that's big. Uh, let's see. Dizzy UI. Button. How do we make it small? Size. Tiny. Button. Button excess. Button. Button excess. I wonder if I have to have a. I think I have to have my front end build running. Yeah, so Tailwind, if you don't know, probably most of you know, inspects your all of your template files for class names, and if it doesn't find the class names that it wants it just kind of throws away that CSS and that's a way to keep your CSS files relatively small, but it means that if you are using new classes, then you have to have your front end build tooling running so that they get added properly. And I don't like that primary the way that looks. Maybe we can make it a, um, what's, I don't know, a, um, 
got mine. Sure. We're not submitting this to a design competition <laughs> anytime soon. <laughs> okay, so download file there. Now we're going to send this to a download page. Download file. And this will need what? A team. Team slug, a file name or file ID. So that's relation file dot ID, and also probably a language, which is translation summary dot language dot code. Next, we need to make that URL. And let's see, so first things first. Oops. Download file, download file. So the path is going to be what? The path is going to be, so we need, that's well, just the arguments we just passed it. So let's see, files. And then <laughs> I do so much copy and pasting URLs that I like always forget the syntax for these things. But I guess, yeah, so we definitely want like a slug for the language. And then we want, I guess we'll just use the file, uh, file primary key was what we did, right? So int. File ID. I'm gonna create this request team slug string file ID string int and language code string decorator. Oh boy, decorator. And here, we want to do what we've been doing in our tests, which is generate that file. So let's go back to our test. Not this test, but this test will get us close enough. Get PO file. Oh dear. So this PO file now wants, instead of a team, it wants a translation file also, which is a bit annoying. I uh, shouldn't have messed with my data models, but okay, let's fix it, let's fix the tests, and then come back to the UI. Um, enter this one. Okay, so this wants a translation file, which will be a translation file, I think. This will be translation file that team. Translation dot objects dot get. Yeah. Mm. But really we want like so yeah, so the input text this is wrong. We only want the input text translation file equals translation file. Okay. I think the rest of that works. How is our test doing? Cannot query test team. Must be translation file instance. I agree. So rather than doing this, we want self.file. File. Boom. Not too bad. 
and now where were we? Get PO file. So, right, so the file is going to be this. And we will give it the team and the ID equals file ID. Then the language. You can do like get object or 404. Probably should be doing this. If you do it this way, then your app doesn't crash if uh, if you like pass in the wrong language code, which if your app is working fine, should never happen unless someone goes in and messes with the URLs, but people mess with the URLs. So um, yeah, so this is a better way to do it. I think this, you give it the language and something like, yeah, that's probably right. Code equals language code. And now finally, get PO file. file language go file o file and then there's like this content disposition thing that you do to do a download I'm just gonna ask ChatGPT for it I have a file the right response to return it as a download. There we go. This PO file, I'm trying to remember what this PO file thing is. I think it's a... Uh, it's a PO, which is a PO file. Yeah, so I guess I don't know. Not quite sure. Let's just try passing that in. Application text, is that right? And then file name will be translation file dot file name. Something like that. Be remarkable if this works, but you never know. Download. Test translations.bio. No way. Oh my goodness. The new lines are missing, but uh, still pretty cool. Can't believe that works on the first try. And then the Spanish one, did we do the Spanish one? Like we got Humano in here. Humano. English, triple check, human. Wow, okay, download, done and dusted. Check. So now all we gotta do is generate our translations. And we already have the code for that. If we wanted to be, I mean, if we wanted to do the super Hackily and quickly, we could just call that code in a view, but that AI stuff runs super long. So unfortunately, that means we're gonna have to bust out a Celery task to run the job in the background. Before getting into that, I'm going to take a little break. Okay, hopefully we are in the home stretch. I am getting a little bit tired. This live streaming, <clears throat> talking while coding stuff, it, it takes a fair amount out of me but I want to get this done, so let's press on. Also, I wanna apologize, I just figured out that for the last little bit there, I've been using the wrong mic input, so I think the audio should be improved now, I hope. 
Sorry about that. So last step, generating translations. And here is where we are going to have to bring in a background task into the picture. And let's just kind of code up what that's going to do. So first things first, I imagine, why don't we just like add a generate translation button on this page? I think in the future we can make this fancier, but for now I'm just going to like add a really big button that'll generate translations for the whole project and that'll just kind of be a simple, a simple UI that we can use. So where are we going to put that? Maybe in our, let's see, do we want the translations to be generated at the file level or at the project level? Maybe at the, uh, well, it doesn't really matter, but maybe at the file level, just for kicks. So what do we call that? Translation file summary. And then somewhere up here, I mean, we can kind of like, I don't know, we'll make this like a div. Like that, maybe flex, header, and then like giant button. Uh, class equals button, button primary, generate translations. Boom. <laughs> that didn't work. Flex. What, w full. Uh. Flex row. No, it needs flex row. Div. <laughs> Such an idiot when it comes to CSS. Let's, are we really gonna do this? Try to get that button displaying on the left or is this a ridiculous thing to be doing? Give it like 30 seconds. So let's see what's going on here. That thing. So this thing is supposed to be full width. It is maybe, uh, what? Justify between. There we go. Align center. Item center. Yeah, okay. Do we need the W full? Nope. And we probably don't need the flex row either. Okay. Cool. Big blue button. So when we press this button, we want to kick off a background job. That background job will do our translations for our entire file. And ideally we would also display something to the UI. That's one thing at a time. So first things first, I think this is gonna be like a form submission. So I'm do that form method is post. Um, is it location or how do you, what's the syntax for telling a form where to post? Um, form target, target, maybe URL, uh, what, translations, start translations, task, and then team.slug and translation file ID. This will now become a submit button. Uh, and this is like a value, I guess. Something like that. I need a CSRF token. And we need to create this view. So yeah, okay, so path. Um, let's see. Translate this 
Let's do this like int file ID thing again. And then we start it. Use dot translates. What do we call it? Start translations task. Normally name my views and my URLs the same. Okay. Request teams log file ID decorator. HTTP response. Okay. Close that. What happened there? Do the right thing. Posted to no, wrong thing. Generate translations. It's probably not the target. Uh, form submit location. Maybe Google will be faster than ChatGPT. Action. Probably action. How many years have I been doing web development? Don't know how to tell a form where to submit. Okay. Cool. That did the right thing. We will now do our business logic. And our business logic is going to evolve a task. So we need a tasks file. And this is going to be start translations task. Yes, it's not great to name it the same thing as the view. Um, let's see, that's fine because we wanna do translate file And this will take a file ID, and that will be it. And then I'm just gonna like look at the tasks file here. So it's yeah, it's gonna be a shared task. Might as well bind it. Import that. And. And here we want to call the thing that our management commands called, which is it's not, get PO file? No, it's this thing, translate messages. Translate messages and then sync translated messages to database. Import that, import that. So the file is going to be version file, version file, get ID equals file ID. The languages we'll get from the project. So languages equals transition file dot project dot languages. And for language and languages, translate our messages from, and the input messages should be essentially like, I guess we'll just get them at the front. Input texts, input text, objects, filter. And we want what, translation file equals translation file. Input text language. This is going to be slow. Then we sync them to the database. And does this thing also probably? I guess this thing doesn't technically need the transition file. So should work with 
transition file team, transition back this guy. And get some output here. I don't know, something like that. And now this thing, we just call delay. We will eventually, I mean, we'll eventually want the task ID to show stuff in the UI. We could try doing that. If we've got most of the example views, let's see. I guess this example views task views. So, um, yeah, results, results.task ID. So, results, result.task ID. I don't know how to name that content type. Okay. Maybe. Let's see. So we need to make sure we're running celery. So celery dash, that's the wrong app. Translate file task is there, that's a good sign. And I don't know what happens if we press this button. Missing one required positional argument. All right, delay. I like it. We got a task back. Task is talking to OpenAI. Oh boy. One shot. Let's see. Done. Refresh. Download Spanish. Boom. Tu compra de product name fue exitosa. Gracias por el apoyo. <laughs> okay. Well, that was pretty easy. So this thing works. It's kind of a miracle. You can sign up, you can create your translation files, upload it, and generate your translations and download it. The UI is absolutely horrible. So I think next time we do another one of these, I'm going to do some work on smoothing out the UI. But for now, this is Corey from Pegasus signing off. We are making progress one step at a time. See you next time.